Okay, so how is everyone today? Do I have all the homeworks? One more? Okay, so today's, uh, is it the first? It is. January is over. So, uh, no, uh, no questions about, about writing stuff on MATLAB? No questions about that? How do I do the thing here? Huh. I can't make it. Okay, so before we talk about uh, <coughs> new math things, because to remind you the way the structure of the course is going to go, is primarily in lab, uh, we're going to do, well, we're going to work with MATLAB uh, when we're in the lab. And in lecture, primarily what we're going to do is talk about a relatively straightforward math topic uh, in, in a rigorous way so that you can go on to program that in MATLAB. So primarily, the purpose of lecture is to talk about math, but on, on occasion, it'll be necessary to talk about MATLAB. So we're going to talk about MATLAB for a minute, then we're going to go on to a math topic. Any questions before we do that? OK. <clears throat> so specifically, in, uh, in MATLAB, there's a thing called a doc string. So doc string. Can someone tell us what that means in plain language? Well, it is, a, it is a comment. Yes? It's a description of how the function works that you created. Right. It describes, it describes how the function works. <coughs> and uh, and uh, also, when you're at the command console, uh, what can you do to find the doc string? Help. You can type help. <laughs> right. so, um, <coughs> so a doc string. So a doc string uh, is a description of what a function is and how it works. So I, I wrote a more or less sufficient explanation of how to achieve, how to, how to put a doc string in your function and that kind of thing in, uh, in one of the programming assignment uh, readmes. So I'll just say C and then the one that it's in uh, is in PEX, P-E-X slash lib. For a description of a doc string. So one of the requirements of your functions uh, that, that you turn in, almost all of them, I don't think I required it for all. No, I think I, I, did re I have required it for all of them, uh, is that your functions have to have a doc string. Uh, so having a doc string in the functions you write is uh, it's a good habit, uh, like good hygiene, in the same sense that brushing your teeth is a good habit. Okay, so, um, you know, I can remember being a child. I have children, and so I can remember this morning. <laughs> and I can remember being a child, you know, ah, brushing your teeth, you just throw a little bit of toothpaste in there, pfft, done, right? Okay, well, yes, I acknowledge that you put the toothpaste in your mouth, and I acknowledge that the toothbrush was in there for approximately four seconds, but that does not constitute brushing your teeth. Okay, so, <laughs> so perhaps you have memories like that uh, when you were a child. So, um, well, the, the method that is used to detect whether or not your function to have a doc string is automated, was, was automated, 
and uh, it had a, uh, it just checked whether or not a doc string was present. Uh, of course, the requirement was that you have to have a good doc string, and good was sort of left nebulous. Uh, but some of you uh, did, did the following. You, you would <laughs> some of you submitted a function without a doc string. So, for example, in uh, I think it was PEX 010. There was a file named f.m where you had to implement that function. So some of you uh, submitted something that looked like this. Function. y equal f of x, and then the definition of the function was y equal x caret 2, and then end. OK. So as far as, as, far as the way the function computes, this is, this is entirely correct. It, the, the function computes the, the result correctly. But the test says that something's not right about this function, what? It says it doesn't have a doc string. OK. So then, uh, so then the test makes a complaint. Um, so it has no doc string. So then you, you know, if, if that's the first time you're seeing it, you wonder, oh, what's a doc string? And then you either ask me or read the instructions or ask your colleagues. And then you figure it out, OK, a doc string. So then you edit it. And it was my hope that you would write something like this. So function y equal f of x. And then how do you put a doc string in a function? Percent, right? Uh, you make a comment, and it has to be a comment that immediately is after the signature line. So it'll be something like this. So you write it, wait, percent, the slashy is going forward, right? Yeah, forward. So you, you put a percent, which means I'm starting a comment, and then, uh, you know, you write uh, something useful, like you say, well, the function's name is f, and then you say something neat, like, I don't know, the F from Wex. <coughs> zero, one, zero, or what, whatever it was, I don't recall. And then, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, you could say something like, you know, you give the signature and say, well, this is how it works. Uh, you know, X is in the reals, y is in the reals. You know, so something nice and descriptive. That was my hope. Uh, and many of you did quite a nice job writing a doc string. And some of you, uh, uh, chafed, I guess, at the requirement of having to write a doc string. And I got uh, several results which were uh, notable, w which were interesting, uh, but here's one of them. <laughs> one, of, one of you did the following. <laughs> Function uh, y equal to f of x. Uh, I'll leave some space for the doc string. The function was implemented correctly. x caret 2. Uh, end. And then uh, the doc string is this. <laughs> of 
course, this passes the test, right? <laughs> it passes, so you know who you are, whoever you are. I didn't bother looking up who did it. I just saw the, because each one of you has a three-digit number. Okay, so that passes the test, because all that the test does, <laughs> all that the test does is ask, is, is, is uh, detect whether or not a doc string is present. Okay, uh, but my contention is that this is more or less um, like uh, a memory that you might have as a child where you sort of faked brushing your teeth but didn't really do it. Okay, so then, uh, also, this is why we can't have nice things, right? <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen now is that um, the, the test for the doc string is going, is, uh, w when I finish test uh, developing it and, get it and getting it working so that it doesn't make any errors, uh, you're going to have to write structured doc strings so that they fit a specific format. Uh, but I don't want to uh, limit your artistic expression too much. Uh, so you can, you can still write things like that if you, if you wish, but you'll just have to write it in a structured way. Okay, uh, good. So good doc strings are, are very much like good hygiene. Good. Any questions about doc strings? If we didn't um, super understand like that, do we need to go and fix it on the other Right. What will what, happen is that I'll update the tests. Okay. And then when the tests are updated, uh, probably every one of you will, you, will, your function will fail the test because, because your doc string is not formatted correctly. And then just edit it and fix it. Okay. If we close the issue for it, will it? It'll just open back up. That would be good. Yeah. Other questions? I mean, as, as much as I agree with the sentiment expressed in this doc stream, uh, the point is that you've, you've got to, um, you know, you've got to get in good habits, right? Another nice one was that we had a function named banana, and one of the doc strings was, I prefer apples. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. I, I, don't, I don't dispute, I, I don't even dispute it, okay? I'm just saying that you have to have good doc strings. Good. Any questions before we move on to some math? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so last time, the last thing that we were saying last time was we were remarking that human beings, the vast majority of human cultures count in what base? Ten. Ten. And what is the presumed reason, the only reason that we can figure out? We got ten fingers. That's the only reason. Okay. It, it, if if the situation had unfolded in a different way, if we had twelve fingers, because we'll almost surely have an even number of fingers because we have bilateral symmetry. So it's quite unlikely. Uh, even though some people can have eleven fingers, uh, b because of a of a you know a, co a strange coincidence in their embryology. We're, we're basically all going to have even fingers, even number of fingers. Uh, if we had been born with 12 fingers, we'd count in base 12. I just guarantee it. Okay, uh, but computers count in what base? Two. Two. The reason is, for, for, for our class, the reason is not specific, is, is not really important, but it's good for you to keep in mind that the reason why computers count in base two is because in the end, computers are just a very complicated way to sew together a very specific electrical device called a what? Called a transistor. And a transistor uh, exists in two, uh, when, it's, when it's electrified, when, when, uh, when power is being applied to it, it has two different states. A state in which it emits low voltage and a state in which it emits high voltage. Okay, and that constitutes a bit. Okay, just like a, a digit in base 10 has, has 10 states, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A bit has just two states, 0 and 1, and those are low voltage and high voltage, respectively, in a computer. At any rate, the electrical facts are not necessary for our class, but you do need to know that, that com computers count in base 2. As a result, because, we, because humans count in base 10, it's quite easy to multiply or divide by 10. Uh, when you're working in base 10. And for computers, 
it is quite easy to multiply or divide by 2 because they work in base 2. So, because uh, computers count in base 2, Uh, multiplication by 2 and divide by 2 are, I'm going to write easy in, in, in scare quotes here. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to use this fact to create a way to multiply by a natural, multiply a natural uh, and a real, but we can, we can do it very quickly. So uh, please recall, I just want to remind you of, we already talked about this a little bit. We defined a function that we uh, denoted as mult underscore n underscore r and what, what was its math signature? Naturals very good naturals cross reals to reals and what it does is that uh, mult underscore n underscore r of n and x uh, implements n multiply x using only addition. So you can, you can, we, we define the multiplication by a natural using only addition. So that's nice. So, uh, but there's a, there was a, at least one problem with it, and that is if you wanted, if you had your favorite x, say pi, and you wanted to do 2370 times pi, then that took 2,370 steps. That's a lot of steps, right? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to come up with a way, uh, we want to come up with a way where we can do, for example, 2370 times pi, but instead of taking 2,370 steps, maybe we can do it in like, uh, like 11 steps. Wouldn't that be preferable? That would be far preferable. So <clears throat> we want to make a new Uh, make a new implementation of n multiply x, uh, which uses far fewer steps. Now, in exchange for being able to use fewer steps, that means that we need more tools. We need more tools. Because if plus is the only thing you have, if plus is the only game in town, then it's, it's simply uh, not going to be possible to, to do any better than using 2,370 steps. So what new tools are we going to use? We're going to use these. Okay, and we'll achieve this I before E. Is that right? Achieve? Mm -hmm. We will achieve this using multiply by 2 and divide by 2. 
Okay. <clears throat> but before we do that, I need to make uh, one more observation. And that is that um, when, you're working in, uh, when you're working in base 10, it's quite easy to detect if a number is divisible by 10. How can you tell? Right. If the least significant digit is a zero. So for example, zero is divisible by 10. Okay. What's the, what's the next biggest number that's divisible by 10? 10, right? What about 2370? Is it divisible by 10? Yeah. How can you tell? There's a zero. Uh, all, the least significant digit is zero. So uh, similarly, uh, similarly, uh, computers can quite easily detect if the number in question is divisible by two because two is the base in which the number is represented. So it's quite easy to tell if a number is, uh, it, for a computer to tell whether or not a number is divisible by two. Okay, and as a reminder, here's a definition the definition of the word parity. <clears throat> okay, so I'll say let n be in the naturals. <clears throat> let n be in the naturals. Uh, in the first case, <clears throat> If n is divisible by 2, uh, then you say that the parity, let me write that in red. <laughs> Parity of n is even. And two otherwise the parity of n. is odd. So I'm, I'm fully aware that all of you were completely familiar with the, word, with the words even and odd. Uh, but you might not have been familiar with the usage of the word parity. Uh, so it's a word that ends up being used a lot in, in computer science like <coughs> classes such as this one, but also later in, in math classes. So to use it in a, in a sentence, I could ask, well, what's the parity of 2370? Even. even. Uh, and then what's the parity of 2375? <coughs> Odd. And here's a nice one. What's the parity of uh, pi? Undefined. It's undefined. Okay. Uh, it's undefined because Notice that the definition began with saying let n be natural. So, so uh, the parity of pi is undefined because pi is not natural. Okay, good. Uh, any question about this? Yes? On the, I believe it's the second part, the third line. This one? No, I'm sorry, one remark. This one? Yes, want to make. Want, want to make. We want to make a new implementation of n multiply x, which uses far fewer steps. And we'll achieve this with multiply by 2, uh, divide by 2, and a check for parity. So, um, like, are you saying, like, in class the other day, that somebody used a plus sign when they were um, defining add? No, they used, they used a, yeah, right. Well, it's, I agree. So, so let, let's write that down. So concerning, let's make sure that everyone recognizes that there's a question. 
So when I say that we're going to do this, uh, what we have is that we can do add. Uh, we can do add uh, on the reels. So that, that's a, per a permissible operation. We can add any two reels together. So we're saying that that one is allowed. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, multiply by two for a reel. Uh, but not just multiply on the reels. So what I mean, what I mean by that is that uh, we could do, it, it's, it's fine to do x plus y for any reel, uh, any reels, uh, so this is okay. We can do uh, x multiply 2, uh, because after all, that's just x plus x, right? Mm -hmm. But at any rate, uh, for x in the reals, we can do that. <clears throat> and furthermore, we can do n uh, divide by 2 uh, for n in the naturals. And n is even. We can do that. And the other thing we can do is uh, n minus 1 uh, for n in the naturals and n more than 0. So those are the permissible ones. So we're, it's, not, it's not that we have multiplication generally. It's that specifically we have multiplication by 2. So that's, that's the, new, the new thing we have. And, I, I claim, and, and what I'm saying is that it's not too big of a deal to say that we have multiplication by 2 because, after all, the computer is representing the numbers in base 2. If it was representing the numbers in base 3, then the thing that we could have cheaply is multiplication by 3. Okay. <clears throat> So we're going to define mult underscore n underscore r <laughs> underscore 2. So it's the same name as before, except it, it has underscore 2 uh, as, as a suffix. Uh, it will have the same signature, naturals cross reels to reels. Okay, and we'll define it in uh, the following way. Uh, mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2, and then we give it a natural argument and then a real argument. And we're going to write its definition, and like before, it will be defined in cases uh, with clauses. Uh, so there'll be multiple clauses, and uh, it'll have to be recursive. So one of the cases is kind of, uh, well, actually, I'll say uh, there, there, there are some trivial cases. Let me, let me say it. That way. Can anyone tell us some trivial cases? If n is 0 or x is 0, it's 0. Okay. So, uh, so in, the case, in the case that n is 0, if that ever comes to pass, then what's the answer? The answer is 0. Okay, and then uh, th th that's, a, that's a trivial case. Another trivial case is that if it ever, if, if someone asks, well, could you multiply the natural one million by the real uh, zero, well, that's a trivial case too, right? So uh, in the case that x is zero, uh, the answer is zero.
Okay. So now there, there are, uh, we need to get to the cases that are not trivial. If you look a few pages ago, uh, where we defined mult underscore n underscore r, then what we did, how did we do it? So for example, we, we might be considering, how do you define five times x? Right. We, we, we said something like that, well, 5 times x, ah, that's just x plus 4 times x. And then you've got to look up, oh, well, then what's 4 times x? And then you say, oh, well, that's just x plus 3 times x. And then you've got to look up, oh, okay, fine. Then what's 3 times x? Well, that's x plus 2 times x. And you just keep doing that until you reach one of these trivial cases. So now we're going to do a similar thing. But we're going to be more clever about it. And instead of just, doing, just saying it's x plus n minus 1 times x, uh, we're going to do different things depending on the parity of n. And remember, parity means what? Even or odd. Even or odd. OK. So uh, the, the guard, wh what is the guard? What part of the function is the guard? The right Sorry? Isn't it the right side? The right side, OK. So this is the guard, and this is the expression. So the guard for the next clause is going to be a check for whether or not n is even. So if n is even, that's the guard. So in the case that n is even, we're going to do something. We're going to do both, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, that's got to be the same thing as mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2. I need to push that n is even over a little bit. Run out of room. And we're going to take uh, the n, we're going to take the n, and we're going to divide it by 2. So n divide by 2. And it's, it's fine to divide by 2 because we already, we already detected that n is even. And we've already said that division by 2 of naturals is a permissible thing. But in exchange for dividing the natural by 2, what do we need to do to the real? We need to multiply it by, by 2. But we don't have, do we have, did I say it? No, we don't have multiplication of the reals. So what do we need to do? What do we have? We have addition on the reals, multiplication of a real times 2. Oh, we do have it. OK, never mind. I, I wrote it down that we had it. OK, fine. So what do we need to do? x times 2. Even if we didn't have real times 2, what could we do? We could do x plus x. Right? Because after all, isn't x multiply 2 x plus x? Yeah, OK. Fine. Fine. So uh, what's the next, what's the, the there's got to be one more clause. So we have two trivial clauses. And then in the other case, that n is odd, right? But remember that, that clauses, the guards in clauses, are evaluated sequentially. And whichever one, whichever one is true first, that's the one that matches. So supposing that, that that doesn't match, that means that n isn't 0. Supposing that that doesn't match, that means that x isn't 0. Supposing that that doesn't match, that means that n isn't even. So there's only one other possibility, right? And what is that? That n is odd. And we don't need to check that. We don't need to, we don't need to check if n is odd because, because that has been logically verified. Okay, so otherwise.
and then I'll just parenthetically remind myself that that, that, that entails that n must be odd, what are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to do the regular mult. We're just going to take 1x away because, after all, if you were multiplying by 17, well, you can't do the even thing. But if you just, if you just take out 1x, then what's the new multiplier? 16, which will be even. So we'll say that this is x plus mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2 and then what will the new arguments be? n minus 1 and and just x and so now I'm gonna I'm gonna shift those guards over so that they're lined up with the other guards Okay, and then again, taking the, the usual convention, uh, I'm going to number the guards, uh, number the clauses, with the first, with the one at the top being one, and then two, and then three, and then four. Okay, so let's try it out. So let's try it out on something biggish. So mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2. And then I'll write 100 for the natural. And uh, just to make it definite, uh, well, to, to, what I mean is to keep it a little bit abstract, I'm just going to write an a where a is not 0. Some, some real that's not zero. So if we were doing the, the previous implementation of mult underscore n underscore r, uh, then how many clause evaluations would be necessary to do this? I think it would be 101, right? Because I think we need 100 of the decrement clause and then one exit clause. So it would take 101 clause evaluations. Which would be a lot of writing, right? We'd all have, a, we'd all have hand cramps uh, by the time we did that. Okay, but does anyone have a, have a guess approximately how many this one's going to take? 50? That's a good guess. Anyone else have a guess? I think it's going to take about seven. I think it's going to take about seven. Eight? He's going for eight? It could be eight. I, I, haven't, I didn't really try and do it. 7.1? <laughs> well, it's got to be an integer, right? <laughs> yep. uh, seven. That seems surprising. Let, let's remove all doubt and just do it. So in the first place, uh, for the first evaluation, which clause matches? The third clause, right? Because the, uh, the natural argument is even. Uh, so third clause. Which means that this is going to be uh, mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2. And what are the new arguments? 50 and 2a. Okay, now what clause matches? Three. Again, clause three matches. So mult underscore n underscore r underscore two. And what are the uh, new arguments? 25 and 4a. 
And I'd like for you to observe that, yes, we, we already know what multiply is, but we're going with the fiction that we don't. Because uh, we want to know what it would be like to make a computer, assuming that one doesn't already exist. Uh, is it the case that 100A is the same as 50 times 2A? Yes, we know that to be the case. Is it the case that it is also the same as 25 times 4A? Yes, that is also the case. All right. Now which clause matches? Four. Clause 4 matches. Uh, why clause 4? Because the natural argument is odd. So what are we supposed to do? <clears throat> we take out whatever, whatever the real argument is, which it currently is what? 4a. So we write 4a. And then what? Plus mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2. And now what are the arguments? 24. 24. And, a. and, and what? A. Not a. 4a. Four 4a. Four Because all that, all that clause 4 does concerning the arguments, it just decrements the natural one and leaves the real one alone. So it was 4a, it is still 4a. You have a question? Uh, could, could we have also done n plus 1 for the argument? Just for a future reference. Like I said, n minus 1x, like it could be n plus 1x. You would still get an even. Yeah. Well, th then instead of this, you'd have to subtract. Right? Because, because what this one means, con conceptually, what this one is saying, what this clause is saying, is that uh, n times x is x plus n minus 1 times x. That's the meaning of that clause. Similarly, what it, and this, this was the only clause when we were doing the previous definition of multiplication. What does this, what, what conceptually does this clause mean? What I, what I want is something that's analogous to this. Right, nx is, well, let's divide that in by, by two and then multiply it with, well, in exchange for, multiplying, for dividing that in by 2, what do we have to do? Multiply the x by 2. That's what that clause is saying. And yes, I agree that there's other ways to, to, to go about it, but, but here's a pretty nice way. Okay, so then 4a, that, that, that term right there, it's finished. It needs no further work. But because we still have mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2, there's, there's work yet to be done. So in order to evaluate this, what do we need to do? Clause 3. Clause 3. So 4a plus, and then clause 3 is the one that doesn't yield up any, any, any new pluses. All that it does is changes the arguments around. So it'll still be mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2. And then what will the new arguments be? 12 and 8a. And understand that what I mean by 8a, the thing that's free is uh, free. The thing that's cheap, the thing that's permissible is multiplication by 2. Of course, by 8a, I mean you take a, you multiply it by 2, and then by 2, and then by 2. So that's three sequential multiplications by 2. That's what I mean by that. OK, uh, so are we finished? No, we're not finished. Uh, 
we ha we have to continue until we have no more molt underscore n underscore r underscore two until they're gone, which means that we have to eventually come to clause one or two. It's only then that we're finished. Okay, so now which clause? Three. Four A plus <coughs> Molt underscore N <coughs> underscore R underscore two. And what are the new arguments? Six and sixteen A. <coughs> okay. The third clause again. Four A plus Molt underscore N underscore R underscore two. And then what are the arguments? Three and thirty two A. Ah, finally, we get something, at least something different, right? Uh, now what? Uh, clause, four. clause four. I'm going to start writing these. I, I really don't like it, but I'm going to write them a little. You know, I, I've worked to make them more or less the same spacing, but now I'm running out of space. So now I'm going to do something that disturbs me, and I'm going to write them a little closer together in the hopes of fitting them all on the same page. Uh, so we're going to do clause four here. Four times a, and because we're doing clause four, that's the one where where some new pluses appear. So, four a plus what? Plus thirty two a. Uh, then plus now mult underscore n underscore r underscore two. And what are the new arguments? Two and thirty-two a. <coughs> okay. Now we'll because n is even. We'll again need the third clause. So four a plus thirty-two a plus mult underscore n underscore r underscore two and then the new new arguments are what one and sixty four sixty four okay so now we'll need the fourth clause because we have something even. I mean something odd, I mean to say. So that'll be four times a plus thirty-two times a. And then now what? Plus sixty-four times a plus mult underscore n underscore r underscore two and what are the new arguments zero and sixty four a no yes yes right because the case the odd case does not play with the real only the even case plays with the real but now finally what we, we make it to an exit case. Which exit case? Case one, right? So 4a plus 32a plus 64a, and then what? Plus zero. 
Terrific. So, uh, what's, we've got some A's there. So in the first place, does that, up to, does that add up to 100 A? Yes. It does. Uh, furthermore, the coefficients on the A's, what do you observe about them? Well, okay, they add up to 100. They're all powers of 2, right? They're all powers of 2. Is that a coincidence? Nah, right? If we had computers that counted in base 3, if, if, that were, if that were so, then instead of having two recursive cases, we could do it with three recursive cases. And the coefficients in front would, would uh, not be exactly, but be more or less uh, powers of three. Okay, interesting. And, un and recall, uh, understand, that what I mean when I write 64a what, what I actually mean by that is take an A and then multiply it by 2, then take that and multiply it by 2, and take that and multiply it by 2, take that and multiply it by 2, take that and multiply it by 2, and take that and multiply it by 2. So that's six multiplications by 2. That's what 64A means. Yes? Uh, does the order matter? Like, I, I wrote it in reverse, like 64 times A plus 32A plus 40. Uh, it's not going to matter. I, I, I put them on the left uh, because that's the way the definition is, is written. <clears throat> Good. So now, uh, I asked for how many clause evaluations would it take, and I throw out a number. The number I threw out was seven. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, well, it wasn't seven, it wasn't eight, it was ten. But can we all agree that it's less than 101? Yes, it is less than 101. Uh, well, what if we were to do some big number, like 2370, right? We could do it by hand. Would it take a lot more than 10 steps? Not that much more, really. Not, not really. Uh, since this one took 100, I would guess that 2370 would take on the order of five more steps. Something like that. How am I calculating that in my head, by the way? In a sense, I'm asking how, how many more multiplications by 2 would I have to get to, to get to 2370? But there's a, that's sort of a clumsy way to say things. We have a name for that kind of thing. I'm fishing for an L word. Log, right? Log. The number of steps that it's going to take <coughs> for this one to do it is going to be proportional to the logarithm of n. So even if n is 2370, well, the logarithm base 2 of 2370 is something like 20. 20? No. Like 11 or 12. Yeah. Okay, and you know, how about uh, what's the logarithm base 2 of 4 billion? What if I asked you to do 4 billion times x? Well, what's the logarithm base 2 of 4 billion? It's about 32. Yeah, it's about 32. So what I want you to see is that if you did, if you did mult underscore n underscore r with arguments 4 billion and x, that would take about 4 billion and one steps. A lot of steps. Whereas if you did this one with arguments 4 billion and x, you could do it in, you know, counting it up, probably be like 40 steps. You know, it'd have to be at least 32 because that's how many times you'd have to divide by two. And there'd be a few times you got an odd case. So, you know, pretty neat, huh? Any question about this? Okay, <clears throat> so the next one, we did that one very carefully. We're gonna do the next one. Uh, I think it doesn't re won't require such such uh, carefulness. So when we were first talking about mult underscore n underscore r two weeks ago or whatever that was, what was the very next thing we did? Uh, pow. pow, right? So, so now what are we going to do? <laughs> pow underscore n underscore r underscore 2, right? So
define pow underscore n underscore r underscore 2 from naturals cross reels to reels as <coughs> pow underscore n underscore r underscore 2 of n and x. And now I'm going to give you about three minutes to see if you can write down the definition. And remember that, that because, uh, because multiplication is a little bit more complicated than addition, uh, we have that, we, you, you have to take care of this special case uh, when both arguments are zero. Right? You've, got, you've got to say something about that is what I mean. And I guess to, to remind you, uh, you know, we're being a little bit fast and loose in this class because it's, a pro it, because it's an introduction to programming. Uh, but, you know, it, it might be mathematically a little um, nicer to write the domain of this as naturals cross reals and then subtract what? Subtract the origin. Might be a little math mathematically, it would be a little better. Do you want us to write it like we did that? Yeah, either one. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but if you write if you write it like this, I suppose it's fine. But if you leave it like this, then then you need to in your definition say something about what happens at the origin. And, and while you're thinking about that, uh, <clears throat> you know, you might, you might uh, wonder, when you go to the MATLAB command console and you type 2370 times pi, it'll just immediately respond with something. It's going to tell you what the answer is. Well, not exactly. It's going to give you a, a, a really good approximation to it, actually. It's a, the approximation will be on the order of accurate to within something like 10 to negative 17 power, which is pretty good. And it's like instant. How does it do that? How does it calculate it so quickly? And the answer is, if you were to get out a microscope and look very closely at the, at the thing, at the machine, uh, the part of it that's doing the actual computation, it's got literally billions of transistors and they're all wired together with little bitty wires and you would see a little machine in there in fact lots of copies of the same little machine that's doing exactly that this is exactly what it's doing pretty interesting <clears throat> So in the interest of time, because I want to do, I want to define one more function today. Uh, well, since I didn't write the red thing, that means I need to somehow say something about what happens at the origin. So I'll do the same silly thing that I did last time and just write, you know, kaboom or whatever. Universe explodes uh, in in the in the event you attempt to do the case when n is zero and x is zero. So it just blows up. <clears throat> okay, what about, uh, so supposing that's false, then what about the case when x is zero? Of course, that case, because the previous guard did not match, 
uh, means that it must be the case that n is not. So what's the answer then? Zero. That the answer is zero. The next possibility is that n is zero. And because the first guard didn't match, this means that x is not zero. So what's the answer? One. Now, when uh, in the previous way we defined it, we just pulled out one x and then multiplied. But now how are we going to do it? We're going we're gonna to do cases by parity, right? Okay, so then uh, this guard, I'll say, well, let's, let's handle what happens when n is even. So when n is even, what do we need to do? Pow. Pow. Right. The new exponent will be n uh, divided by 2. Uh, divide by 2. And the new base will be x multiply x. So instead of, instead of x plus x, this is x <coughs> multiply x. So this one is assuming that we can multiply two reals. Uh, the last case is the odd case, which is the same as before. So pow underscore n underscore r underscore 2. We take away 1 from the exponent, and we leave the base uh, otherwise. Okay, so last one. <coughs> Any questions about this definition? So I won't bother doing it because conceptually it's like exactly the same thing as the previous page. Except the operation, instead of using pluses, you use dots. Okay, last thing. Uh, what if we wanted to define mult, mult underscore z <laughs> underscore r underscore uh, 2. And now it's going to be from integers cross the reals to the reals. So that we'd be able to multiply. Uh, we, yeah, we'd be able to use integers instead of just naturals. Well, what's the shortest and sweetest way to do it? <coughs> So we, we, need, we need one thing. So assuming that we have all the stuff necessary for mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2, assuming we have all of that, and we have one more given negation, in the reals, that is to say that if I give you pi, you can compute negative pi. OK. Uh, n and x. Well, um, some integers are natural, right? So, some of them are. <laughs> Half of them. <laughs> uh, so some integers are natural. And we want this product to agree with the natural one, right? So let's ask. Uh, it could be the case that n is in the naturals. Then what's the answer? Molt underscore n underscore r underscore 2. That's the answer, right? Molt underscore n underscore r underscore 2 of n and x. Because if n is natural, well, we already did that, right? so we don't need to redo it. So assume that this is false, that it is not the case that n is natural.
If that's not the case, then what must be true about n? It's a negative integer. So such an example would be something like negative 2370. It could be the case that n is negative 2370. Well, how can we fix it? We can negate the arguments, right? Uh, so we need, we need negation in R uh, and in Z. We need, we need them both. Right? Uh, so we can define that the answer is mult underscore n underscore r underscore 2. And what will the new arguments be? Negative, negative n negative. and negative x. Right? Because if x is real, then so is negative x. And furthermore, if n is an integer, but not natural, then what? <coughs> then negative n is natural. So? Well, the, the only thing that changes is the, the first, the first uh, argument. The second argument is still a real, right? Right. Right. So you, you can either you can either you can put this negation here or you could negate it out here. Okay. But it, it requires two negations. Right? So what, what this is saying conceptually, and this will be the last thing, this clause is saying the thing that we all know to be true, that n multiplied by x is the same as what? Negative n multiplied by negative x. And now we're going to be able to multiply integers by reals, not just naturals. What an exciting development. Okay, so have a nice Thursday.